Well, Derek Sloan is back at it again, doing crazy things like taking pretty reasonable conservative positions that almost no one has a problem with except the mainstream media and using them to try and win a conservative party leadership race. I know, insane. What has he done this time? Well, he has decided to declare the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization or some sort of extremist organization that we need to take action against. Now, if we know me, I'm very in favor of this. The Muslim Brotherhood and me don't get along too well. I mean, we all know they they currently want two and a half million dollars from me because I hurt their feelings. So, I obviously believe we should be taking action against the Muslim Brotherhood, but can we declare them a terrorist organization? Here's where things kind of get tricky, and let me sort of parse out Derek Sloan's reasoning, uh, what can reasonably be done, and 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 what, what can't um, on these issues. So, can, is the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization? Tough question to ask. Um, now, the Muslim Brotherhood gets away with uh, saying they are a nonviolent organization. So they will support, support things like, you know, Islamists take over the world, global caliphate, Sharia law, where everyone's run under the auspices of Islam. Don't worry, Christians and Jews, there's things for you. You'd be dimmies. Uh, Hindus, you have to all die, but that's okay. Right? So th th they'll just say it. We don't want to chop anyone's head off, but like we're but legally, we're going to vote for this. Okay? So that's sort of the, we're not a terrorist, but now... This argument can be taken apart because they do have a weakness, is they really don't like Jews. And they've been very consistent on this. So the Muslim Brotherhood has always been an organization that has been supportive of genocidal violence against the Jewish people. To some extent, also Hindus, but then that's more Jamaati Islami, which is pretty much Muslim Brotherhood in South Asia. But as we'll do now, we'll just stick with the Muslim Brotherhood to make this video not 10 hours long. Okay, so you have the Muslim Brotherhood from inception. Hassan al-Banna in the 1920s. One of the first things he did is he would raise army and he sent militants into British Mandate Palestine to help with the Arab revolts and kill Jews. They did wonderful, uh, noble, progressive things like sneak into farms at night and slit the, th the throats of uh, Jewish women and children. Um, all very proud of it. They wrote down they did this. They're quite happy they did this. No one really denies this. It's one of the, it's one of the points of pride of, of what they did there. Um, the only ones who don't talk about it is, you know, Europeans and Westerners because it hurts the narrative. Okay, now, you also have the 1950s where you have Muslim Brother members like Sayyid Qutub who are pretty pro-violence. And you even have to today, so the spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Yusuf Karadawi, who the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia says is an extremist. So I want to also point out that when we talk about radical Islam, we have to acknowledge that, one, it's radical Islam. Like... There are moderate Muslims. It's not all, right? Like, if, if that's the case, then, then it just becomes about Islam in general. And yes, there are people like that, and we should debate them. But for the most part, you have to realize that the Muslim Brotherhood ideology is not the ideology of the Muslim people. It's an ideology that the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia says, those people are crazy. Yusuf Karadawi keeps saying how great suicide bombing is. Because they, they ruled that, you know, oh, Jews or Zionists or anyone who supports Israel isn't a person, so therefore you can kill them because, um, you know, Jews will kill, you know, Muslims sometimes. So to protect the Muslims, you got to kill Jews. And this is very terroristy logic, right? Because the infidels are a threat to us, so we can kill them first, right? This is the ideology of ISIS. It's the ideology of Yusuf Karadawi. So the Muslim Brotherhood will say, no, 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 we're nonviolent when it comes to non-Jews. They'll be like, no, 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 we're nonviolent. We disavow. We disavow violence. We disavow. Now, most major terrorists have originally been Muslim Brotherhood members. Zarqawi, Osama bin Laden, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, all of these people started out in the Muslim Brotherhood. It is the university of terrorism, right? You go in there to the Muslim Brotherhood, you get ideologically brainwashed, uh, you come out radical. I mean, one of the fundamental tenets of the Muslim Brotherhood, according to the Muslim Brotherhood, is they are coming into the Western civilization. They seek to destroy our institutions from within. It's bad. We shouldn't do it. Okay. Now, Derek Sloan wants to fight this ideology. Here's where it's going to get hard. I'm totally in favor. I'm going to help you here. But difficult conversations are happening. One, they are, according to expert testimony in the Canadian Senate, embedded in all major political parties. I mean, we all know the O'Toole campaign is suing me because I talked about their Muslim Brotherhood connection. So there's the Conservative Party. Peter McKay's not much better, right? So four major groups were identified in Canadian Senate testimony by, uh, in 2015 by Dr. Lorenzo Vendino, who is a worldwide expert on Muslim Brotherhood in the West. He said there are eight to ten major organizations operating under the Mus as Muslim Brotherhood front groups here, but four big ones that he actually named. Airfan which is now a defunct terrorist organization. We found them funneling money to Hamas. They were ruled as, you know, not actually being a charity. There's three others now. There is Islamic Relief Canada, the Muslim Association of Canada, and the National Council of Canadian Muslims, the NCCM, formerly known as CARECAN. Okay? All three of these organizations 
have legitimate political clout now. Okay, Aaron O'Toole and Peter McKay, so Ahmed Hussein, Justin Trudeau, and a bunch of liberal ministers, and Jagmeet Singh and Andrew Scheer, uh, all attend the Muslim Association of Canada um, Eid celebration at the Muslim Association of Canada. This is the group that up until 2019, had on their website in multiple places that they are founded and based off the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood, Hassan al-Banna. Uh, so they were openly Muslim Brotherhood. That is something that you can that you definitely say about the Muslim Association of Canada. Now, the other thing that, that we have here is groups like Islamic Relief Canada, which is currently launching a $2.5 million lawsuit against a national security expert, Tom Quiggin, for talking about their connections to Islamic Relief Worldwide, which... The government of Israel and the UAE says supports Hamas a terrorist organization. Now, okay, are they Aaron O'Toole? You against cancel culture? Are, how, how is suing? How is suing people for two and a half million dollars for for filing an RCMP complaint against terrorism funding that they they were able to they basically able to make with just Canadian government records and their own records and other government anyways, right? And then you have the National Council of Canadian Muslims, formerly Care Can. We have. You know, evidence from the Holy Land Foundation trial that the founders of Care America, their parent organization, uh, founded as an explicit purpose as a, the propaganda arm of Hamas in the West. Okay, so we could go into the founding of the NCCM. Who is their original guy? I mean, the current executive director of the NCCM. Not a big fan of yours truly. I don't know why. Uh, we used to stay up late, watch Brokeback Mountain together, but Mustafa Farouk has turned on me. Right, we have we have articles out there, and that's coming out that he once uh, talked about. How do we make a caliphate in Canada? Right, how do we turn cities into 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 caliphates? Interesting question, Mustafa. Mustafa is also the man who thinks that Omar Kardar is a Canadian hero who did nothing wrong. Yes, kids, you're listening to this show. Remember, there is nothing wrong with joining Al Qaeda or the Taliban or making bombs and IEDs to blow up Canadian soldiers. All of this falls under the category of nothing wrong, according to executive director of the NCCM, Mustafa Farouk. Also, not a big fan of me. Why are you blocking me on Twitter, Mustafa? Let's talk. Let's hang out. Let's cuddle. I mean, wh what's up? So, there you have it. This is sort of, okay, Derek Sloan wants to go after the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, I'll give him a high five, predicating the fact that he actually goes after the Muslim Brotherhood, but he should know, and you should all know, this is a lot more complicated than it looks. Because what happens if a group just says, no, 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 we're not part of the Muslim Brotherhood anymore. We're not. Disavow. Right? Can you do anything? Right? It, it, does, it, does it mean, like, because to take measures against the, Islam, the Muslim Brotherhood, yeah, it'd be great if we declared, you know, okay, we're going to declare the Egyptian arm a terrorist organization, which we should. The Tunisian arm as well. We should declare them. Right? That means you can't send money or... Do, 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 do deals with them, which I'm sure some people are doing, right? It's the same reason why we should declare the IRGC, the Islamic Re uh, Republic Revolutionary Guard, a terrorist organization, because they control half of Iran's economy, right? So then trading with them and doing deals with them would, would be illegal, right? It would give us a sort of enforcement. So yes, it's great that we can, you know, say things about the Muslim Brotherhood. That's good. But to actually take action against the Muslim Brotherhood ideolo ideology in Canada, there's a second step here, which is Okay, we have to acknowledge, okay, what is their ideology and how do we combat it, right? So do we start saying like, hey, we're going to look at the ideology of people like Hassan al-Banna, Saeed Qutub, and Yusuf Karadawi, for example. We're going to use these big three. We're going to say, any books, you know, you can't, you know, then it becomes like you can't teach these guys in school, like you can't reference them, right? Because we definitely don't want private schools or madrasas teaching a bunch of 13-year-olds the ideology of, Saeed, of these three guys because then they'll come out and you know, become radicals. But do we really want to institute laws that say you can't talk about these guys? Because then it's like a university professor who wants to talk about radical ideology. They all of a sudden can't talk about Yusuf Karadawi. So it's complicated, right? It's a very hard line to walk. And I'm glad that Derek Sloan has taken step one and said, okay, obviously this is a problem because this is a problem, right? The Muslim Brotherhood is specifically and openly anti-Canada actively working according to their own documents to destroy it. So it's great that we take action against it. But there's another step here. It's one, yes, we need to fight the Muslim Brotherhood. Two, we need to acknowledge that, yes, Muslim Brotherhood front groups have presence in Canada. And three, oh damn, they're already inside the house. They have political access, they have political power. It means when you fight the Muslim Brotherhood, you're going to be going up against the entire NDP, the entire Liberal Party, and half of the Conservative Party trying to keep the status quo. And 
good on Derek Sloan for, for, for stepping up to the plate here. Um, and guys, if you want, just, you know, tweet this video at Aaron O'Toole. Let's see, what does Aaron O'Toole think of the Muslim Brotherhood?